This is a powerful story of one pastor Solomon who loved the Lord wholeheartedly, and how the devil, even Lucifer himself, came and attacked him to ensure that he stops him from carrying out the will and duty of God upon his life. You will be amazed at what happened. This is a story that will change your life completely and increase your faith. Watch to the end and remain blessed as I will be narrating this this time around. I am Pastor Solomon from a country in West Africa. I would not want to call the name of the country again. My father was a pastor and he brought me up in the fear of the Lord. As a young child, he began to train me on how to read and memorize the scripture. This made me to have many books of the Bible in my head, which I can recite of heart. My father is a mighty man of prayers, and I find out that I suddenly began to pray like he did. I became addicted to prayers, so much that I began to receive heavenly encounters from angels, and sometimes Jesus would pay me a visit. I became open to the prophetic, and I will see some things before it happens. There came a season that I began to have this repeated vision. I think it's this vision that opened me up to some attacks. I had this vision more than three times. In the vision, I saw some people gathered and they were bathing a demon of a short size. Everybody who was seeing what I was seeing did not bother to talk about it. They would just close their mouths and walk away. When I saw this, I will always repeat this particular words. I will point at the devil and say, that is a devil you are washing and you should not be doing that. And any time I say this, the devil will come and chase after me with great anger. He will pursue me with anger to ensure he kill me and stop me from exposing him. And few days later, I will still see the same vision again and the same thing will happen. After I had this vision for some times, I decided to ask God for interpretation. And the spirit of the Lord told me that he is going to use me to expose the devil and his cunning works in the church. He told me through my messages, he will expose the false doctrines that some pastors are preaching in the church now and show people the real word of Christ. But then the implications to this is that the devil will come after me with great anger because he won't be happy with me exposing his works and hiding agendas. The devil did all he could do to stop me, but God stood with me. There was one day that I was praying at night and I had a physical encounter with Satan. That one was not funny at all. I was praying that night and suddenly I began to feel the presence of demons around me. Before I knew it, I saw something like a shadow standing and looking at me. I wanted to call Jesus, but something blocked my throat and I couldn't call the name of Jesus out anymore. The thing that looked like shadow pointed its hand towards my direction and physically it was like something held my throat. I felt a hand strangling my throat. The hand lifted me and my legs were not touching the ground. My legs were dangling in the air. I was suspended in the air. That night, I was nearly killed, but God intervened for me and set me free, and the spirit ran away. I knew the devil came for two reasons that night. One is to kill me, and secondly, if he was unable to kill me, then he will make me scared that I won't pray again, because the devil wanted me to believe that prayer does not work, neither can it save. But when the Lord came and delivered me from his hand, he told me not to be scared, that from now upward, his presence will be mighty with me to keep and protect me from all harm. I continued with my prayers and studies of the Bible, and the encounters also increased. In one occasion, Jesus visited me. He told me that he was going to use me mightily for his glory, and that through my life and messages on earth, many souls will be won to heaven. He categorically told me that he would use me as a full-time minister unto himself, and that I was not going to do any white-collar job. I accepted because I love the Lord with my whole heart. I share some of my encounters with my father who encouraged me the more and began to couch me on things I needed to do to become a faithful steward of Christ. He gave me some books to read, which I did. He began to carry me along to some of the places where he was invited to preach the gospel and sometimes he will even give me the opportunity to preach. This indeed helped my spiritual life, and I grew up faster in the ways of God. But this unfortunate thing then happened. We organized a prayer meeting, which we were praying 12 hours nonstop, and my father was at home, not feeling too strong. We finished the prayers, and I went to meet my father, and in my presence, after a little time with him. My father gave up the ghost. He died. 
That was the first major problems I had. How could I do this work that God wants me to do without the mentorship of my father? I prayed and asked God to bring him back, but I was told that he has finished his work upon the earth already and that his time to return to heaven is due, and that's why he has been called home. Man plans, but God proposes, what else could I do? I allowed the will of God to be done. I immediately knew that this is a call for more discipline and hard work. I felt that my father has finished his work and left the mandate and the Barton for me. So I needed to be fully prepared to carry out this duty. After his buried, the church authority gathered together and made me the pastor of the church in the stage of my father. When they did this, I knew that the prophecy is gradually coming to pass. So I gave myself to vehement prayer and fasting. Then this happened. I never knew that my case has become a major case in the kingdom of darkness and my prayer life has been given them trauma. All hell broke loss against me to stop me by all means. They all started planning means to even kill me in order for God's plans over my life to be in futility. They did their best, but God was revealing their plans to me and was defending me until this happened. I was to travel to one state to carry out one duty for my family, and at night I received a letter in my dream, and this is what the letter states, I will meet you in the place where you are going. I will be there waiting for you. Sender Louis Saphir. As a man of faith, I decided not to fear, but to still go on the journey. If it were you, what would you do? I went on the journey, and that was the beginning of my affliction. I am not here to say that the power of God is limited, though. Neither am I saying that he could not protect me from that attack, but there are protocols we need to follow sometimes, and other times he allows some things to happen to us to try our faith. Let me teach you something here. And that's one of the purpose of saying this, to that you learn this for your safety. If you receive such a message, I mean, when you receive a message of attack or evil ahead of you. Before you take or make any decision, go and ask for God's will and perfect direction. If he says go, then go. You will be covered. Don't just move because you think you have faith. Move because it is the will of God for you to go 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. Verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. 13. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? As long as you have the backup of God, then you were on the safe side. I got to the place and I was greatly afflicted with different types of diseases that I nearly died. In fact, it was ambulance that rushed me out of the place to the hospital. I was taken directly to the emergency quarter and I stayed there for long. The doctors did their best, but to no avail, although they tried, but I was not healed. My family members, after they had spent a hug amount of money on me, they decided to take me home for prayers. That was when the real battle began. All the horde of hell came up against me. They tried their best to kill me. They even went ahead and were afflicting some of my family members that were praying for me. But God intervened with his mighty power and set me free. Before my total deliverance, I had a dream. And I saw Lucifer. He used great chains to tie me to a very big tree. But suddenly, the power of God came on me. And I broke the chains. I lifted him up and hit him on the ground and I went away. Now I am free, I am healed, and I have began my duty fully in the church again. The devil planned to stop me, but God said no. Let me use this medium to encourage someone, no matter what you are passing through. Don't lose hope on God. It may look like he is not there sometimes, but he is there, and in due time he will come and deliver you. When Job in the Bible was afflicted, it looks like God has turned his back on him, but it was all a trial of faith. And when all was said and done, God came and set him free, and his life became a testimony of encouragement and faith for us today. So everything that is happening to you now is not going to be there forever. Just believe in God and be more prayerful. Secondly, learn to commit your all to God. Once you know that God has called you to carry out a specific duty for him, put your effort in it dot and ensure that you do it to the glory of God. I have started my evangelism again, and planning to do more things for the God who called me out of darkness and translated me to the image of his glory. 
I will not stop until I finish all the works he committed into my hands. I am saying this that everywhere you are, but your effort together and carry out the work of the master. For God is still looking for laborers. May God help you all in Jesus' name, amen. For the benefits of those who are not saved, give your life to Christ Jesus now, because without him you don't have any coverage. You can be attacked and killed by the power of darkness anytime. So for your security and safety, and your salvation from hell, which is the main point, let's please accept Jesus and be saved. Let's do this prayers together. Lord Jesus, I admit I am a sinner. Please forgive me all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe you died for me on the cross and I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life and clean it from the book of death. I reject the devil and his works, and I declare I am saved by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. I trust you are blessed. You can also leave a comment below at the comments box, and you can like, share, and subscribe for more. God bless you.